Welcome to yoga. If you uh, have some um, blocks and a strap or a TheraBand or a scarf, grab those. We're going to use those today. You don't have to have them, but if you have them, it'll make the uh, practice a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging. We're going to start on our backs. And we're just going to loop that strap around the ball of our foot. Foot is flexed, opposite leg is extended on the floor. I'm giving my TheraBand a little bit of resistance, not too much. And I'm just gonna bend that knee towards the chest and straighten the leg. I'm pointing the feet as I straighten the leg. You don't have to do that. I just like to strengthen my foot a little bit, working against the resistance of the TheraBand. If you have a strap, you can just push into the strap or you can also use a sweatshirt. So we're just bending and straightening. I just realized my shoulders were kind of up by my ears. So go ahead and drop those shoulders down and engage the belly. Maybe close the eyes and take a few breaths here. Dropping into the body, dropping into the breath. Good, and go ahead and just Torque the leg in the joint, in and out, in and out, and then just a few little kicks here, keeping the foot flexed, just warming up that hip joint, <clears throat> getting that femur working in the hip socket, up and down, a few nice battements. Those are, that's ballet for kicks. <laughs> And then a few circles. So trace the capital letter D out, down, and up. Out, down, and up. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. and reverse. So do the stem of the capital D first and then the curve. Same pattern. Inhale and exhale. Using the core to bring that leg back into that neutral line. Engaging the belly button towards the spine. Good. Go ahead and take that leg across your body. I like to stick my thumb right here in the crease of my hip joint. Try to keep that right side of your pelvis rooted into the ground and just kind of um, sickle the right foot so the toes are pointing down. You're gonna get a nice, Stretch on the outer part of your leg, the outer line there. Oh, breathe into that. It can be pretty intense. And then inhale and exhale, open up the leg to a second position extension. The leg is out on the side and I'm pulling the toes towards the ear, trying to keep the left hip down, rooted into the ground. Big breath here. Good. And switch sides. Extend the right leg. A few plies here. Upside down plies with that left leg. Inhale and exhale. Gentle resistance into the band or the strap. Release that lower back on the floor. Try to be efficient with your effort. Good. 
Good, and then a few bop nice easy kicks. Inhale on the way down, exhale up. Trace that reverse capital letter D out and down and up. Inhale, exhale. And reverse, go straight down and then around and up. Using that core to bring the leg back into center. Try to keep the pelvis nice and stable on the ground. Yeah, you don't want to lift one hip up for the other. It's kind of impossible not to move the hip at all, but you want to try and keep it stable. That's where the heat comes in to your body. Go ahead and cross that leg across the body. Ooh, sickle the foot, send the toes down towards the ground, breathe. And then open up the leg to second, pulling the toes towards the ear. Hmm. Good, and bring it back to center and release. We're just gonna do a few, rock your body up to sitting, just a little bit of arm uh, warm up here. Take that band or the strap, hold it in front of you, inhale. Exhale, take that arm, those arms back. And again, so we have a little bit of resistance, but you gotta be able to take that <clears throat> strap all the way up and over, nice and slow. Try to trace a really big arch over your body. You don't have to have a strap to do this. You can just use your arms and just work them nice and slow, just really lengthening the arms all the way back and all the way down, focusing on that breath. The strap or the band just gives you a little extra resistance, but not a whole lot. You can still do this without the prop. It just makes it a little bit more interactive. If you're just joining us, jump on in. We're still warming up. I had to start right on time today because I got to leave right on time. But welcome. All right, now we're going to take the strap. Again, you don't have to use the strap, but we're going to take the arms up and we're just going to bring the elbows down to the rib cage. Inhale, exhale down. Now, if you don't have the strap, you really have to send a lot of effort into the arms, but you can get a lot out of this. If you really pull those elbows into the rib cage and focus on that exhale. We're working those lats. Yes, those wing muscles in our back so we can have a nice sculpted back this summer, this spring when we're wearing all of our tank tops and sundresses. Couple more, I'm just gonna flip around here so you can see me. Beautiful. You want a little bit of resistance. Now go ahead and hold that strap up in a V and we're just going to tilt the rib cage, tap one fist 
up and tap the other fist. Now keep the V, so keep the relationship between the hands the same. Yes, and what are we working here? Oh yeah, you feel that the waistline, you feel the rib cage, you feel those uh, abs along the side of the chest and the rib cage. Couple more. Good. Let's inhale, stretch the hands out away from the shoulders, drop the shoulders, lift the waist. Exhale, bring that, those arms forward and all the way down to the floor and just relax. Let the head drop to the floor. Big breath in, big sigh. Hmm. Hmm. Heavy head. And slowly walk the hands up. Take the hands behind the hips. Drop the knees to the floor. You might need to untuck your feet a little bit. Inhale here, chin to chest. Squeeze the shoulders behind you. On the exhale, press the pelvis off the floor, coming onto the uh, bottom of your legs, the calves. And then if you want, you can let the head drop. And recover, good. Extend those legs out. Just give them a little bit of a shake. Take the right leg and bring the bottom of the foot to the inside uh, of the left inner thigh. The left leg is out slightly on a diagonal. We're going to inhale, lengthen the left arm down and the right arm up. On the exhale, we're gonna slowly walk the fingertips along the mat, reaching out and down towards the left toes. If you want, you can grab hold of the foot. Now I want you to open up the chest. Look under the right armpit. Root the right hip down into the ground and the right knee down into the ground while you slowly pull yourself down closer and closer to the left leg. If this hurts your neck, you can look down. Now, the other thing you can also do is open up that right arm and take it behind you. Wrap it around your back. Sometimes that helps you to get a little bit more traction and open up the rib cage towards the ceiling. Beautiful. Slowly come out of that. Switch legs. <clears throat> Sitting nice and tall, right arm comes down, left arm comes up on the inhale. The right foot is flexed. Walk the fingertips out along the mat and look under the left armpit. Drop the left scapula. Grab hold of that foot if you can. Open up the rib cage. Breathe. If you want, open up that arm, take it behind the back, wrap the back of the palm against the back and use that to give yourself a little extra twist, opening up the chest and pulling yourself a little closer towards the leg, but you wanna root and ground the left hip. Oh yeah, come out of that nice and slow. Good, take the feet in front of you. Inhale, fingertips facing forward, chin to chest, squeeze those shoulders. Exhale, press the pelvis up into reverse plank. Take the chin up to the ceiling, breathe. And recover. All right, good. 
So we talked about using our blocks and our straps today. So go ahead and grab a block if you have it. We're gonna warm up a little bit more. Take one block and put it between the thighs. Have your other block ready to go, which we'll be using it soon. So my feet are flat on the ground and my block is right between my knees. Now you don't have to have a block. <clears throat> it just gives you a little extra, uh, a little extra strengthening. We're gonna do a simple bridge. Inhale, on the exhale, press the pelvis off the floor, but squeeze that block. Good, squeeze that block. Inhale, drop the pelvis. Exhale, press back up. Usually we do this bridge without the block and it, it's a glute strengthener, but working with the block, we're also getting that inner thigh and the hamstrings as well. And of course, the quads. So we're just really isolating the area around the hips and down the top of the legs. Keep going, inhale as you lower the hips, exhale as you press up. Give me about three more, three or four more. All right, now we're gonna do the opposite. Take both blocks and press them into the outer part of your thigh, of your outer part of your knee. Inhale, I want you to push those blocks into your legs. On the exhale, press up, and I want those knees pressing in to the block. So now you're moving your knees away from each other, and you're pressing them into those two blocks. Exhale, push, good. So you're lifting the pelvis and sending the knees and the thighs towards the blocks. So we have resistance today. We're working with resistance with the strap and with the block. Good. All right. Taking one block and putting it back between the knees, take the hands and putting, up, putting the feet up in the air, so sort of like in table. Inhale. On the exhale, I want you to bring your upper body off the floor to the bra line. Hands are behind the head. Elbows are back. Well, all we're going to do is tap those toes. Squeeze that block and tap those toes. Inhale, lower the feet. Exhale, bring it back to table. Two more. Good. All right. One more fun thing here. Take both blocks, come onto the right side of your body. <clears throat> Put the blocks right next to your hip. Take your top leg, extend, and your bottom leg is bent. All we're basically gonna do is use this block to kind of roll over, hands are, again, to the back of our head, and we're just gonna do little crunches, getting that waistline again. Inhale when you're down, exhale, little crunch. You can reach this arm up and along the side of your body like you're reaching for your toes every time you come up. Tap that elbow to the ground. 
It's not a big movement, but it's a great one. And breathe into those flexions. Good, swing the legs around and let's do the other side. Bottom leg is tucked, top leg is long. I've got these blocks right up against my hip. <clears throat> this left hand is behind the head, right arm is reaching along the body. Exhale, reach for those toes. Yes, it's gonna be a small movement if you don't have the block. If you don't have the block, you're literally gonna come off the floor about two inches and that's about it. And that's fine. It's still working the same muscle. Getting those waistlines pulled in, activated, engaged. And breathe. Woo! Yes, those are good. All right, coming back onto our back. <clears throat> I'm getting a sip of water. We're going to do one last um, ab exercise for the rectus abdominis. The, um, the abdominals that go straight down the middle. So there's a couple of options here. We can start with the block above our head. Inhale. Our feet can be flat on the floor, knees up. On the exhale, we're gonna pass the block either to our knees or to our feet, and then come back down to the mat. And then grab the block and come back. So you're passing the block from your hands to your ankles or your knees, and then you're passing it back. Now for an extra challenge, you can straighten the legs. Inhale, on the exhale, keep the legs straight, place the block between the legs, and then drop, and then pass it back. Either one is super challenging. So you really want to reach as far up as you can. If you're reaching for those ankles, reach for those ankles. Tap the toes, reach for the block. If your legs are straight, trying to get that block between the feet, getting the upper body off the floor, really using that exhale. Last one. Good. Just put that block behind your head and just rest and let those knees fall to the right and to the left. Good. Warming up quickly with abs and glutes. That's the way to do it. One last time here, we're gonna take that block and put it between our knees. <clears throat> Hands come down by the sides, inhale. Squeeze that block between the knees, press the pelvis up. Now we're gonna stay here and bridge. All we're gonna do is shift the weight to the left, lift the right leg, extend it, put it back down. Lift the left leg, extend it, put it back down. Couple more times, inhale, or maybe exhale, maybe exhale on the leg out. That feels more organic. One more set.
and release. Go ahead and take that block out and hug the knees to the chest. Stretch out that lower back. Maybe do a few circles here with the knees to massage that lower back onto the ground. And let's do a peel off, let's extend the body. Big inhale, exhale, peel the body, the upper body off the floor, reach for the toes, come up to sitting, and then release over those legs and give yourself a nice forward fold. Using the exhale to release into gravity, let gravity do the work. Drop into your fold. Don't dump into it, but consciously release. And come on up. Beautiful. All right, let's do our pranayama, and then we'll get going with the second half of our class. 20 breaths. Inhale, take the arms up, look up, exhale through prayer, using your ujjayi breathing through the nose. Three more. On that last one, interlace the fingers and send the palms to the ceiling. Walk the shoulders up the ladder, right? Left, right, left, right, left. Create that wonderful space in the rib cage. And then keep that space as you open and drop the arms. Keeping that length that we had just created, let's come right into cat cow on our hands and knees and we'll just warm up that spine a little bit more. Arch, look up, round, look down. If you wanna add a little Strengthening to this movement, you can bring the right knee to the nose and then the right leg up and out on the exhale. Extend that right leg and let's just do 10 little taps. One. So when I say use breath of fire, there's two ways you can do breath of fire. That's using the ujjayi breathing with the nose and the closed throat. Or if you want, you can open the mouth and do Stick your tongue out and do a breath of fire with an open mouth. It's either, either with a closed mouth or an open mouth. All right. Basically, we're going to do the other side. You can stick with just cat cow. Beautiful and delicious bread and butter of yoga right here. Arch, look up and round, look down. If you want to add a level of activity to it, you can extend the leg into neutral and then 
Bring the belly button to the spine as you scoop the knee to the nose. Most important with cat cow though, is the breath. Matching the movement of the breath with the movement of the body. Finding that internal rhythm, like the ocean, waves crashing on the shore. And hold that leg out in 10 little taps with a breath of fire. Good. Just come on into prayer pose for a minute. Just rest your forehead down on the ground. If you want to rock back and forth. Give yourself a big sigh. Whew. This is a great place to come if you just need a moment during your practice at any time. Coming into prayer is always a-okay. Coming back up onto all fours, tucking the toes. Let's greet our down dog. Wrap those shoulders and arms out, down, and back. Heels are reaching towards the floor. Sits bones are lifting up towards the ceiling. Rib cage is nice and tucked. Belly button is lifted towards the spine. Go ahead and walk the dog here. Tread those feet a few times. And then when you're ready, come into plank. And let's just breathe in plank right here, strong plank. You can lower the knees to the floor and do a little push up here. Or if you want, you can stay in plank lower to the ground, full chaturanga, and then back up to plank, and then down dog. Go ahead and lift that right leg up and step it through. Let's come into crescent pose. The back heel is up, and we're gonna lift the chest towards where the wall meets the ceiling. See if you can really get that crescent shape with your body. Breathe. From here, we're going to use the power of that back leg. And I have to back up a little, I'm gonna hit my head and push into warrior three. So the left leg is up in the air. The torso is parallel with the floor. You can have your arms in prayer in front of your chest. Woo, falling here. Or you can have your arms along your back. Boy, whenever I move my arms, my body <laughs> reacts. <sighs> or you can take your arms out. Stepping back into crescent, rewinding through crescent. Let's come forward and create a nice diagonal line. Hands come to prayer in front of our chest and then give yourself a little twist Left elbow to right knee, looking over your right shoulder. Good. Look down at the ground, put both hands on the mat, and send that leg right back to down dog. You can come into plank, 
and do your half chaturanga push up, or you can do a full chaturanga with a little cobra and then back into down dog. Lift the left leg and step that one through. Let's come into, I'm going to start back further from the beginning, come into crescent. Breathe. Drop those shoulders. Shifting the weight forward, using the power of that back leg to push into warrior three on the left side. Try to drop that right hip. And when you're ready, step back into crescent, rewind, bring the hands to prayer, twist right elbow to left knee, push into the prayer hands to get yourself a little extra twist looking over the left shoulder. Look towards your mat, hands come to the ground, step back and you can do your vinyasa. Plank, lower to the ground, little cobra or little push up on your knees. And let's just actually come back into prayer and breathe in prayer for a second. Walking the hands up. Let's grab those blocks, place them behind us, do a little camel stretch. Inhale, chin to chest, squeeze those shoulders behind you. Exhale, press the pelvis forward and let the head go back. And release. When we work in our practice, our yogic practice, it's always important to notice and to pay attention to that tension of opposites. So if we're working in down dog, in this flex position, then we might wanna also bring in a camel so we can get the extension position. So we always want to work in opposition with that tension and that resistance between two positions. All right, speaking of that, let's come back into down dog. Say hello to your down dog one more time. Let's lift that right leg up and just hold it there for a minute. Hold it and lift that heel towards the ceiling. <clears throat> We're gonna bring that knee down and through and, and across the body. And then we're gonna bring that left arm up off the floor. So we're in side plank, but the legs are in an L position. Breathe. Look down towards the mat, bring the hand to the floor and come back into down dog. We're just gonna go right into the left side. So let's lift that left leg, breathe here for a minute. Keep the hips square, but lift the leg as high as it will go. <clears throat> when you're ready, bring that knee down, through and across, and then lift the right arm up. Lift those hips. Mm 
Look down at your mat and bring the hand down, bring the foot back. And let's walk the feet to the hands. <clears throat> Heavy head, shake out those knees. Forward fold, standing forward fold, grab those elbows in your hands, wag the tail. And just give yourself a moment here in forward fold. When you're ready, bend those knees and roll to standing. Last thing to come up is the head. Awesome. We're going to go into dancer pose. <clears throat> Shift your weight to your left leg. Grab the outside of your right arch. We're going to press the top of the foot into the hand as we reach up. Find that length. Tilting the torso forward. Lift the leg as you kind of like a teapot. Lean forward and reach forward. Top of the knee faces toward the floor. See if you can recover back through the same pose. Let go of that foot, cross it on top of the standing leg and come into one legged chair. And just press that knee into the floor. You're going to get a nice stretch of the right glute there and the left glute. Mm. We're going to stand one more time, lifting the knee to the chest. Find that length, find that length, find that length. Beautiful. Send that leg back all the way into crescent one more time. And then we're going to tip forward, shoot that leg up in the air into standing split. Hands are by our feet. Just really breathe here. See if you can get a little closer, the nose to the knee. And re bring that leg down, back into forward fold, bend the knees and roll through to standing. Woo! Other side. Dancer, one-legged chair, crescent, and then standing splits. Grab hold of the outside of that left foot. Right arm comes up. Find the root. That right foot is rooted into the ground, pressing into the hand as you tilt forward into your dancer pose. Recover back through and let go of that foot, bring it forward, cross the leg on top, one-legged four, chair pose. Same leg, stand tall, lift the thigh to the chest. Step it back into crescent, find that arch, Use that arch to get the momentum to flip that leg up in the air. Hands come to either side of the foot. Nose reaches towards the knee. And then bring that leg down. Shake it out. Bend the knees. Roll through the spine. And let's come into tree. Tree is our treat. Get some water. Nice and simple tree. <clears throat> Find your focal point, settle yourself.
And when you're ready, switch sides. Good. All right, stepping out into a wide stance. Let's come into a pyramid stretch. Arms are out, inhale. On the exhale, keep the back flat as you reach forward into like a table position. Right here, we're just gonna take three bends of the knee. Keep the back flat, deep squat and lift. Deep squat, no, you're bending your knees, not your back just the knees, the back stays flat. There you go. Yeah, so you're like pumping your knees over your toes while your back stays in that table position. Yes. Beautiful. Couple more, just powering up those legs. And on the next time you straighten your legs, tip your head forward and down, grab those ankles and come into a pyramid stretch. Good. Bending the right knee over the right toes. Place your left hand in front of your right toes. Twist and look up. Send the weight back. Get yourself into that great hamstring stretch and spine stretch. And switch sides. Left knee bends over left toes. Right arm is planted on the ground, right hand. Left arm is twisting up, looking over my left shoulder. Weight is shifted back. If you shift that weight back, you're gonna feel that stretch in the hamstring. And back to center, bring those heels in, toes out. Let's come into a sumo squat, press those elbows into the knees, hands come to prayer. Ooh, breathe. And hands come down to the floor. Come back up into forward fold, shake it out. Tuck that knee down and let's come onto our backs. <clears throat> All right. Excellent. Ooh, shake those legs out up in the air a little bit. Shake them, shake them, shake them. Yes, now you can stay here. This is a great stretch. Arms come above the head. The legs are straight up. This is called L. <clears throat> or if you want, you can come into candle. Hands are on the floor, palms down, inhale. On the exhale, press the hands into the floor to get the hips up. Walk the hands up the back. And then let the legs shoot straight off the pelvis. If you want to lower those legs slowly over the head, you can come into plow. Taking the hands down to the mat. And then when you're ready, slowly with control, keeping the legs close to your face for as long as possible, lower back down into L, 
And then let's take an eight count lowering of the legs. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, stretch those hands away from the toes. Squeeze everything. Make a fist with your face with your with your hands. Squinch up your face, tighten the glutes, tighten the shoulders, tighten the feet, the knees, the rib cage, tighten everything until you can't hold it any longer and then relax. Big sigh. <sighs> Hmm. Roll over onto the side of your body and push yourself up gently to come to sitting. You're welcome to do a Shavasana on your own, but I'm going to close our practice today. Closing my eyes, concealing our practice with gratitude. Thank you to our mats for being there for us. Thank you to our body for moving us through shapes. Thank you for our sweat, for cleansing the bad toxins out. And thank you for the air and the oxygen, breathing good stuff in. Hands coming into prayer. The spirit in me salutes the spirit in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for coming. See you next week.